Hello there and welcome to this collection of notebooks and tutorials on advanced digital signal processing. This is a course offered by Professor Schuller at the Humanau University of Technology. I am Renato and this is our first notebook and we'll start talking about quantization. So in this notebook we will um, have an introduction to quantization. We'll take a look at the quantization error and the types of uniform quantization like the mid riser or the mid thread and we finish with a python example uh, to explore a bit of quantization let's get started quantization is together with sampling a fundamental part in analog to digital conversion so quantization is the process of mapping continuous values into a finite range of discrete values we can have here an example where we assume that our analog to digital converter has an input range from minus one to one volt. We are going to use four bit accuracy. That means that we have a total of two to the power of four code words or indices. And we'll see what happens when we have 0 0.2 volts at the input of the analog to digital converter. So a very important thing we have now is the step size. So in this case, our step size, we're using 4-bit accuracy and our range is from minus 1 volt to 1 volt. So our step size will be 0 0.125. So from um, the step size, we get now a quantization index that is later encoded as a code word. So when our input voltage in the input of the analog to digital converter is 0 0.2 volts, we will apply this rounding of the input voltage divided by the step size that will give us an index. In this case, index is equal to 2. Um, when we have a step size, a constant step size, we call that our quantizer is uniform. So that's a uniform quantizer. This index is later on coded using the four bits and sent to a decoder. So we can, for example, uh, code this index 2 using 4-bit binary code word 0010 and the decoder will reconstruct the voltage by first decoding the code word to an index so it will decode from 0010 to the index 2 and then we'll multiply the index by the step size and we'll have a reconstructed value of 0 0.25 so this is the dequantized signal and we can see that it's already different from our original input voltage, it was 0 0.2. And this is what is called the quantization error. So in our example, the quantization error is the quantized value minus the original value. So it's 0 0.05 volts. So there will be always a range of voltages which are mapped to the same code word. And this... Uh, this range is our step size. So the steps represent the quantization in the analog to digital conversion process and they lead to quantization errors. The output after the quantization is a linear pulse code modulation and it's linear in the sense that the code values are proportional to the input signal values. So we've seen that uh, using a uniform quantizer in this example, we have our step size, then we quantize um, the input voltage into an index, the index is coded uh, in a code word and it's um, then reconstructed by uh, multiplying the index by a step size and we always have quantization errors. We will now take a deeper look into the quantization error, we will call our quantization error E then the quantization error power is the expectation value of the squared quantization error E as defined in this integral here. Here we have the P of E, which is the probability of the error value E, and we compute the power of each possible error value E by squaring it, and then we multiply it with its probability to obtain the average power. So the um, this number will give us some impression of the signal quality after quantization and later on we will see that when we set it in relation to the signal energy we will have what is the so-called signal to noise ratio 
for our quantizer and the analog to digital converter. Here we are assuming that the quantization error is uniformly distributed, so all possible values of the quantization error appear with, the, with equal probability, and that's usually the case when the signal is much larger than the quantization step size delta. Yeah. We know here that the, the integral over the probabilities of all possible values of E must be 1, and the possible values of E are between minus delta divided by 2 to delta divided by 2, so delta here is the step size, so we have that the integral uh, over the probabilities of all possible values must be 1, so, and when we solve here, we will have the, the probability of E, the P of E is 1 divided by delta, then when we go back to this definition of the quantization error power, the expectation value of the squared quantization error, and we replace here the P of E that we obtain, we will see that we have that the quantization error power for a uniform quantizer with step size delta, and for large signal is delta squared divided by 12. Depending on if the quantizer has the input voltage zero at the center of a quantization interval or on the boundary of that interval, we can call the quantizer a mid-thread or a mid-riser quantizer. So here we have a mid-thread quantizer that there is the input voltage zero at the center of quantization interval, and we see that we have the index after, after quantization given by rounding and then the reconstruction or the dequantization, which is the quantization index times the step size. On the other hand, we have here the mid-riser quantizer, and we don't have the input voltage zero at the center of quantization interval, so we have here, we use a floor, dividing the value by the step size, and the dequantization, the reconstruction, we multiply the quantization index by the step size, and we also add half of the step size in the reconstruction. So this we have then mid-rise and mid-thread quantization. So this makes a lot of difference for small input values. So for the mid-rise quantizer, very small values, they are quantized to plus or minus half the quantization interval, half of the step size. And the mid-thread quantizer, very small um, input values are rounded to zero. So we can see the mid-rise quantizer uh, as not having a zero as a reconstruction value, but only uh, small positive and negative values. So the mid-rise is perhaps more accurate because it also reacts to small input values, but the mid-thread can be seen as saving a bit rate because it quantizes very small values to zero. Uh, we can see also, we can also observe that the mid-thread quantizer swallows the small signal levels since they are all rounded to zero and the mid-right quantizer captures the small values but distorted. We have now a Python example to see quantization in action, both mid-thread and mid-rise. So here I'm importing libraries, we are using NumPy and Matplotlib. We are using 32 kilohertz as a sampling frequency. So we're defining here a signal to be quantized. This is going to be a sine wave that goes from minus one, the amplitude goes from minus one to one, and the frequency is 500 hertz. And we will use a quantization with a bit accuracy of four bits. So then we have the step size that is our uh, from minus one volt to one volt, so it's two divided by two to the power of four, so this is going to be our step size. Then we have the quantization with the mid-rise using the floor rounding and the um, thread, mid-thread using the round, so it's dividing the value um, by the step size. And the dequantization we are having here so are the same formulas like we've seen for the mid-riser where we add half of the step size on the dequantization part. For the mid-thread, we just multiply the, the index after quantization by the step size. 
So we're just reproducing here the formulas for quantization and dequantization. We also plot in the quantization error, which is the quantized minus the original input signal. And we have here, this is our original sine wave, and we can have the mid-thread quantization and the mid-rise quantization. And we also have here our quantization error for the mid-thread. Yeah. We can listen, so this is the original signal. So this is the sine wave, sine wave of four, 500 hertz frequency. This is the quantized signal of mid-thread. We can see it introduces some noise, so the quantization of four bits. We have original, quantized mid-thread, quantized mid-rise. So in this process of quantizing, uh, going down to four bits accuracy, we see some uh, noise and in fact if we plot the the frequency uh, in the frequency domain so here i'm using scipy to have um, fft and plot light to plot we are doing some uh, fft of the original signal and the quantized signal we're using two to the power of 10 points for the fft we are also normalizing so we want to compare all our uh, signals in the frequency domain and here we have this is the spectrum of the original so it's uh, 500 Hertz we have our original signal but then we for mid thread we see that we have the 500 Hertz components but also we have this noise due to the quantization errors of the mid thread and if we go to the mid-rise, we have a different shape of noise, but we also have quantization noise due to the quantization errors. So we, we've seen here that we have two types of uniform quantizers. You can find a mid-riser or a mid-thread, so it depends if the input voltage zero uh, is at the center of the quantization interval or on the boundary of the interval. In this example, we can also listen to the quantization error and the noise due to the quantization errors. This is the final part of this uh, notebook and we have here a real-time quantization example. So we are going to use Pi Audio to um, quantize using mid-thread and mid-rise and different bit depths or different bit accuracy for the quantizers. So here I'm importing the libraries, we are using Pi Audio, we are using iPy widgets to have this graphical user interface and to control our example. So this is um, some parameters for the audio stream. This is the um, parameters for the quantizer. So this is the function that's going to take care of the audio stream and do this quantization. So we have here recording um, the audio input stream into data with a block length of chunk that is defined as a parameter and we convert the stream of bytes to a list of numbers and we have here samples then we have here the quantization the calculation of the quantization steps depending on the number of bits we are using and we have a mid-thread quantizer that is using the round and then we have the um, mid-rise quantizer that uses the floor and for the dequantization we have here both for mid-thread and mid-rise and then we write back the quantized samples to the audio stream so we can listen to it so here we will have the graphical user interface element so we have buttons and a drop down menu and an integer text box and here we have the functions that will be called when we press the buttons or we change those values finally we have this thread when it's going to uh, run this function quantization example is defined here so we can have a separate thread and then it's process the audio and to have access and non-blocking access to uh, the graphical user interface 
and we create our audio stream and we can run this example so I will start first with um, a bit depth of 8 so it's going from 16 bits the Pi audio uses to uh, 8 and we will not see so much um, noise and quantization errors but if we go then the bit depth to 4 we can see the mid thread will, is going to to swallow some small values but the mid rise will still keep those values but it will be distorted so we can perceive this noise so let's start with this um, example So this is uh, the example, uh, so we can verify and observe uh, different uh, quantizers with different bit accuracies. And that's it for today, and see you on our next notebook and tutorial.